in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. My name is Abel, and I'm from the St. Peter's Jacobite Syrian Orthodox Church in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I will give you all a short introduction to one of St. Paul's dearest disciples, St. Titus of Crete. St. Titus was born on the island of Crete to a pagan family. He was educated in Hellenistic philosophy, literature, and sciences, as well as ancient poets. He led a virtuous life and never indulged in pagan practices. It is believed that St. Titus saw a dream which compelled him to abandon Hellenistic wisdom and to seek real salvation. He began reading the prophecy of Isaiah and heard about a great prophet named Jesus in Jerusalem. Along with a group of people from Crete, he traveled to Jerusalem to witness Jesus and his words and miracles. Young Titus became witness to Jesus and his crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, as well as the events of the Pentecost. He is counted as one of the 72 disciples of Jesus Christ and was baptized by St. Paul. During the Synod of Jerusalem, some who were in favor of circumcision pressured the newly baptized Titus to be circumcised. But St. Paul defended Titus and refused. St. Titus became St. Paul's secretary and interpreter. According to St. Jerome, St. Titus translated many of St. Paul's Latin works to Greek. He was an excellent disciple who traveled throughout the Mediterranean and delivered epistles for St. Paul, as well as preached the word of God in those churches that St. Paul assigned him. When the church in Corinth rebelled against St. Paul after his harsh first epistle to the Corinthians, St. Titus was sent to Corinth to resolve the issue and restore their favor of St. Paul. He was sent with a letter that is now lost, called the Severe Letter. St. Titus resolved the issues and went to Macedonia to inform St. Paul of his success. Overcome with joy, St. Paul wrote the second epistle to the Corinthians and sent Titus back with the letter, and later joined him in Corinth. While preaching in Crete with St. Titus, the pressing issues in other churches compelled St. Paul to leave Crete. Before leaving, St. Paul consecrated St. Titus as the Bishop of Crete and left his beloved disciple to continue his work. He trusted St. Titus to guide the flock in Crete and to convert pagans to Christianity through preaching and miracles. His primary responsibility was to ordain bishops and priests for the church in Crete. St. Paul left Crete to Ephesus and consecrated Timothy as the bishop there and continued on to Macedonia. From there, he wrote the first epistle to Timothy as well as the epistle to Titus. In the epistle to Titus, he advises him about the requirements and duties of elders and bishops. When St. Paul was imprisoned in Rome, awaiting trial in front of Caesar, St. Titus left Crete to be by the side of his spiritual father. After his martyrdom, St. Titus returned to Crete and toiled until his last days to guide the church there and bring others to Christianity. It can be understood from the testimonies and stories about St. Titus that he was a peacemaker, a great administrator, a trustworthy disciple, a great preacher of the gospel, and a witness for Christ among the Gentiles, like his mentor, St. Paul. St. Titus died of natural causes according to tradition, but the year of death is disputed between 96 AD and 107 AD. He was entombed in the Cathedral of Gortina, Crete. The Syriac Orthodox Church commemorates him on August 25th. His only remaining relic is his skull, which is kept in veneration at the Church of St. Titus at Heraklion, Crete. It used to be kept in Venice, where it was moved during the Turkish occupation. Just as St. Titus listened to the voice of God and his calling to become a witness for Christ, we must also let go of our wisdom and listen to the voice of God. St. Titus understood that our wisdom and knowledge won't bring us salvation, but that only Jesus Christ can bring true salvation and meaning to life. We must become zealous in our service and knowledgeable about Scripture and become witnesses to Jesus among the Gentiles of modern times. May the intercession of St. Titus help us all.